Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you the Tar Bolton. Tarbolton is one of the best known Irish reels and I'm going to show you two versions, one really simple version and one version based pretty closely on the recording by Michael Coleman and he recorded it back in 1934 and it was a very influential recording. He did it along with two other tunes, a Longford Collector and the Sailor's Bonnet and on my Patreon page I'm going to post the three tunes together so if you're interested in that then take a look at my Patreon. Um, this tune was originally based on this Scottish Strath Bay called the Tarbolton Lodge and the Tarbolton Lodge was a Masonic Lodge set up by uh, Robert Burns in the town of Tarbolton in Ayrshire in Scotland but it's now very much seen as an Irish tune. Uh, one of the most important things about this tune is that it's played with a very distinct swing so it's not played. It's not played like that. It's played da ba da ba da, like that. And it's an interesting question as to whether before the Michael Coleman recording it was actually played straight or not. Uh, there's a suspicion that the early recordings in America actually introduced the idea of swing to Irish music but I have no idea whether that's true or not and if you have an opinion then please uh, post it uh, in the comments below. So I'm going to start off with the simplified version and what I've done with this, first of all I've taken out all of the ornamentation and secondly I've added quite a few uh, quarter notes or crotchets in each bar because the original has mostly eighth notes so it's a fairly uh, continuous barrage of quavers and just having a few crotchets here and there makes it easier if you are fairly new to this kind of music and if you find yourself playing in a session along with other people playing this and you are playing the simplified version it will fit absolutely fine so there's no need to be embarrassed by the fact that you're not playing all of those notes and ornaments that the others are playing so I'm going to play this through fairly slowly first without the backing and then with the backing and here's the simplified version. One, two, three, four. say I'm going to play this slow and I always set off at a pace which I'm sure quite a few will find annoyingly fast. Of course there is a thing on YouTube which allows you to slow it down to whatever pace you like without changing the pitch. So I apologise for playing too fast and uh, that's the thing you should do if it is too fast. Uh, just one thing to say about the beginning, uh, keep your first finger, to start with keep your first finger on the E and on the B just um, it makes it a lot easier rather than having to take your first finger off and then put it on again if you can keep it on that's that makes it a lot easier okay let's do that again uh, with the backing at a steady pace
So that's a good starting point and uh, once you've learned to do it at that tempo and in that version then you can move on towards the more advanced version. Let's now move through the, first of all, the version that has the, all of the notes in there but not all of the grace notes. So that's going to go like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So quite a lot more going on there. Um, the um, the places like in bar eleven, there that's what's called a treble or bowed triplet or shiver or burl if you're in Scottish. And when that's played up to tempo, uh, it sounds something like this. So it's uh, it's very fast. And in fact, it's played slightly longer on the last note. So the first two are really as short as possible. Like that. And I do have a video all about the treble. So take a look at that if you're not sure how to do that. It's not an easy one. So don't expect that to come easily. In bar three, we have a thing called a cut. So we're playing most of the melody notes. And then the next melody note... It's just interrupted by a fourth finger playing the upper note. And uh, often you don't really know what is the purpose of a, uh, um, an ornament. And here it's very clearly the fact that there, there are two of the same notes following one another. And just by putting in that cut, that um, emphasises the fact that it's two notes and not one. And for a piper who can't stop... Um, and discriminate between two adjacent notes that are the same, that's a very important thing. And so this is a thing that is kind of inherited from the pipes. We have another cut in bar six. Um, so the second finger is playing, uh, just flicking off before the F sharp. And then we've got another cut at the end. Second finger cut. There, uh, we've got another cut on the uh, bar 9, another cut there. Now that is a triplet, well that's a proper triplet and that's bowed, uh, but slurred. Now here, if you're playing it slow, then you play it like that, but if you're playing it fast, then you try and do a proper shiver. Blah. We've got a, a double stop there, or a drone rather, so we've got a D under the A. Another drone there, and I've got a video about drones as well. That's a cut. And that is a, a cut as well. Okay, let's go all the way through that. First of all, slowly, and then with the backing. One, two, three, four. Okay, now I'll finish off by playing it with the backing. 
if you enjoyed this, then do uh, like and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, I can send you a PDF of the sheet music if you're interested. And if you would like uh, the three-tune set the, uh, with the Longford Collector and the Sailor's Bonnet, then do, as I say, um, join me on Patreon and you can get it free there. Um, I'll see you again soon and I'll play you out with the full speed version. Thank <laughs> you.